Hi, Kylie Davis from CoreLogic again here. We hope you enjoyed part one. In part two, we look at how big data can help identify the major life events that signal someone is likely to move. And we look at the role of the industry, we look at the behaviours of agents and franchises and how they're likely to change in this new environment. Enjoy. You don't own any other platform that you have a presence on, whether it's the portals, Facebook that we've talked about, any social media platform, we, we do not own that audience and we're playing on their land under their rules. So I think what, and a lot of the explosion with a lot of the portals ask, and, and they're, they're putting a big push behind it. We, we all see it. They're putting a big push behind, fill out your profile, make sure it's up to date. John, if, um, if the big portals did uh, use your platform to feed data back to agents, mm -hmm. or if agents themselves wanted to use your platform to see what's happening inside their websites, what would the outcome for consumers be? Like, We've talked all day about, um, about how good this big data is for agents, but what's the benefit for um, consumers of, seeing, of, having, of agents having better knowledge? I think it always comes down to personalization. So you're gonna get targeted, you're gonna get uh, marketed to no matter what. So would you rather it be for you know, generic things that you don't want? Or would you rather be specific to your wants and needs? And, and so if you're gonna, you know, either way you're gonna get a message now, I'd rather, much rather have a message be relevant to me. So um, again, just touching on that creepy factor, as long as it's, it's not invasive and it's not, um, you know, it's not causing me to feel uncomfortable when I receive it as a customer, because the customer is the ultimate voice of reason. It doesn't matter if the marketing, what the marketing agent thinks. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really when you receive that message, you know, is this, is this relevant, does this help you know, move me further towards making a purchase. I think it's a way to look at it is it's digital rapport. Um, if, you, if, you know, if we really simplify it for an agent, an agent would go into a listing presentation and a good agent would always be looking for triggers. They might be looking for the Sydney Swans jersey hanging on the wall or they might be looking for, you know, there's a couple of children who go to this school on the mantelpiece, whatever it may be. Um, and then they talk about that and they build up that rapport. And I think essentially this is what big data enables you to do. It enables you, and the word's been used time and time again, is relevance. It enables you to have the conversation, digitally or otherwise, on a relevant level to that consumer. You, know, you can't expect them to fit into what we want, we need to fit into what they want. So I certainly think, as I said, from a, for a simplified level, it's about digital rapport. You know, and again, if we, and if we can utilise it to create that, we're going to do that much better. So, so the commonality between where agents need to be and where they are now in terms of using big data is actually kind of a common thread that should be going through, that has gone through real estate for all time, I guess, which is about human, human connection and building relationships and that really what big data is doing is allowing you to amplify your ability to do that with more people more quickly and more affordably. Um, but, the, but if you're really crap at that, your big data is not going to make you any better at it. And if your database isn't right in the first place, because one, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is around sort of marketing automation and, and making sure that you're, you're replicating that customer journey, making them feel wanted and making it feel personal when actually it is a machine doing it. So what are the skills that agents or agencies, I think might be a better uh, question, need to do differently or need to embrace um, to, to kind of own this space? So I mean, agents typically are really good at, at buying, listing and selling. Is there anything that they need to be adjusting in their behaviour around it? And then is there anything, and what do the, the, the franchises and the offices over at the top of them, what sort of new roles are we seeing coming out in real estate or what kind of uh, things should they be doing to, to help agents you know, amplify their behaviour through this. Stuff. Certainly, we talked about upskilling. You know, I think that if you look at this space within real estate, it's very much at its embryonic state. You look across it, other verticals. As I said, it's it's almost old hat. They've been doing it for a while now. So I think we need to basically be able to build a bridge between what we currently do and what we're talking about today. And that bridge is upskilling and training. Um, and it wouldn't take a great deal. I mean. It would be something as simple as a principal picking up the phone and calling anybody around this table and, and asking for you know an hour catch up over a cup of coffee, just understanding it. The only silly questions are one that asked. I think the what data and, and all this information we've been talking about today, it's it's really a mindset. Is how do we use data to create more helpful content that we know for a fact people want to receive? That if we took it away someone would genuinely be upset that we've taken that away. So throwing, say, three to five years forward, 
And knowing that banks and financial institutions are slightly ahead of us on the curve of embracing it, what's real estate going to look like? What's a, what's a big data enabled real estate industry in Australia going to look like? What's the profession going to feel like? I think it'll feel a lot more scientific, to be quite honest. So we're um, talking earlier about the areas that um, the agents need to be trained in. Or, and I think some of those are going to be, um, you know, data capture, um, experimental design. I took a class back in, in uni where, you know, we, we learn experimental design where you're basically treating populations differently. I do test A on one population, test B on another population. And, and with all this uh, content, and all this data and all this information, real estate agents on the ground are going to have choices in how they interact with individuals. I think you've touched on a really good point is, is testing. And it's a, I think we're seeing all these um, players coming into the market, uh, whether it's uh, portals or, or um, flat fee model uh, platforms where uh, we all know, I won't name any, but I'm sure we all know who they are. Um, I think what we're seeing, I think they're, they're testing because I think the industry, they, they understand that this industry is, is one of the last to be ready for something big, monumental to change. And I think we're seeing these platforms come into the market to test what works. So they may not be the thing that's going to change, they, they may be, uh, but I think what they're doing is, is testing to see what works, what doesn't, which you touched on. Mm, I think agents should, I think we've got to be careful, there's a lot of jargon that's thrown around our industry at the moment mm. and uh, it almost seems a bit of a scare campaign. We, we shouldn't fear disruption, we should embrace disruption. What we should be fearing is disintermediation, you know, where we, we, we're the cut out, um, but we, by embracing a disruption, I think we can obviously keep disintermediation at bay, certainly for a prolonged period as such. Um, and I think from, from my point of view, um, I think the future is, is an interesting one, it's an exciting one. Um, I certainly think there's going to be a lot more cognitive technology. I think the CRM systems themselves in Australia will, will develop and advance over time to the point where you're starting putting the information into a CRM, um, they'll have interfaces or some sort of connecting portal, so a lot of this information. So you won't have to go to the third party it will be integrated and all of a sudden you're putting someone's information in there's a match oh they're doing this they've done that there's a behavior yeah. so I think there's going to be far more artificial intelligence there's absolutely no question about that but the sooner we start on that path the better and that would be my advice today like I said don't fear it embrace yeah. it yeah. get think, on with it I think a common trait of everything we're talking about in where it could go is just more control it's mm -hmm. having more control over your own destiny in, in terms of driving your own marketing, not just throwing something at a portal, crossing your fingers and hoping you get, you get the people coming in. You're actually testing it, like you say, you're testing it, you're learning, uh, you're using all of the data available to you and you're, you're learning to, to make your own bread almost. I think the other thing is around the social, we, we've touched upon it a bit, but Australia has the highest uh, usage of, of, uh, of social media per capita anywhere in the world, I think now. Um, and one of the things I'm sure we'll see emerge, I'm convinced, is more properties actually being listed and sold through or via social media. Uh, one of the things that we're now we've just launched, or it's albeit in its trial stage, is we're now we have the ability to actually um, list or advertise properties natively within Facebook. Um, and we've done some really interesting research in there. Now the first thing is, obviously again, we own that data and information, unlike if we advertise the same property through realestate.com or domain. And the other thing as well is that we can look at the analytics behind the scenes, so we can figure out obviously if we are targeting the right people. The other thing to mention is the level of targeting. I've seen the back end of Facebook, it's frightening what they know about us, yet here we are only a few weeks ago going on about the census and how dare they ask us information. What Facebook know about us is frightening by comparison. They know your inside leg measurement. It's yeah. Incredible, you know. So the, the reality is, is that if, if if we can start leveraging some of this information um, and and working to our advantage, in our trial uh, two weeks ago, we took just the one property and we looked at it across realestate.com and we looked at it across native promotion through Facebook, and through Facebook it was a quarter of the price, okay, and we had pretty much the same inquiry level. Um, um, well, it, you know, again, it's only a matter of time. And I think it goes back to the point, we, again, we bring up that word relevance, is nobody, nobody minds if they see something. Everyone says they hate ads, right? Everyone says we hate seeing ads on Facebook. But I think if something lands in their, their, their feed, uh, when they're scrolling through, it might be a property that, that you're advertising through the platform that's very specifically targeted to people you know for a fact that are interested in renting or buying right now, they don't mind that. Even though, right. you, even though it's an ad, it's relevant to them. 
and uh, I think that's I think that's certainly something that the uh, the portals may be thinking about is is that something that um, could potentially give control back to the agents. I think that's certainly something to think about. Well, I've, got Based on knowing how much well, I've got I've got a scary <laughs> thought, and I'd love to to, to pose this question to uh, the other participants. My view, probably not maybe five years, but possibly ten years, is that. Um, we'll have the ability as a consumer to be able to determine the suitability of a house ourselves. So actually there'll be some form of artificial intelligence or algorithm to determine how suitable me or my family is to that house or that street. I think that again surely isn't that far off, you know, because um, and maybe it's five, ten years, but God, that is interesting, isn't it? Because all of a sudden you're trying to sell the virtues of why you should buy this house. No, 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 this algorithm says otherwise. You know? <laughs> Listing targeting is really only the tip of the iceberg. So from a real estate agent's point of view, I think forever they're going to be involved because it's such a huge purchase. They need, you know, people need to talk to someone. Um, but there's so many things that you could build into a productionized system, like recommendations around how they should deal with people at each step through the process, when they think they're going to change, when they think they're going to buy. Um, and then, like you said, on the other side, which houses match which clients? Um, how do you get much smarter around that, around understanding their needs, having tools that can actually um, drive that in a, in a sensible way? It is just the tip of the iceberg. This is really the first step around just getting some data literacy amongst the um, Could big data area. become a um, buyer's agent, like become a like someone who m recommend like you know like if you like this house you might also like um, in in Amazon we, we yeah. do all the time for books is is and and agents are specifically there uh, in for the vendor mm. is there a role for big data to help buyers uh, more Yeah, it'll be <laughs> there'll be definitely recommendations, but it'll be about the real estate agents being able to actually take that information and then communicate it with potential buyers. Do you think it could in fact drive a lot of listings that wouldn't have organically happened if you had a if you had a system that said you would love this house it's not for sale but maybe maybe we could drop something into you to say we found someone interested in, in your property have you thought of selling? Yeah. So that, that, that would be a real game. Like finding a, sell, some, a buyer who would love that house it's not on the market yet and actually going well there could be a deal here yep they'd be willing to pay an amazing amount for it. Yeah. You can see that happening you definitely can. Um, I think that it comes down to uh, obviously the wealth of information that you get from all the different sources, uh, but we just can't forget how good the data is that the real estate agents would have themselves if they start to dig into that. They've got that long history. Yeah. One model that would be really interesting to look at was developing a model where you start offering houses that weren't for sale and having an algorithm that says how much is that house suited to me and how much are you likely to move in the, in the next six months, put those together and you've almost got a, a feeling for what level of offer you need to make. How do you feel about that, Doug? I mean, again, it's a matter of inevitability, sadly. Um, agents need to be relevant and they need to be somehow, as best they can, front and centre of that, that process. Yeah. Um, what would the role of an agent be inside that kind of a model? Uh, I guess general advice, um, you know, it could be anything around, um, you know, how you sell the property. Um, because let's not, let's look at it, an agent does add value to the process. I mean, we have got people now coming along who I believe aren't disruptors, that they're discounters. Um, but if you choose a good agent and go through the right method of sale, you will extract a higher price. It's as simple as that. Um, the matchmaker philosophy, it, it kind of works, but we could be talking of a variance of even half a percent. But when you look at half a percent across the value of a home in Sydney, for argument's sake, it is significant. Um, so I think, again, it's just demonstrating value and demonstrating that you're relevant to the process. What are the sort of three things that agents should be doing now to, and, and um, also then a separate what should the franchises and the, and the bigger agencies be doing now to make this work for them, like to make big data work for them? What are the three things they can do now to start to get stuck into the space and not be overwhelmed by it? I think just be curious and, and a lot of agents who would be listening to this or, or watching this or, or reading this would, would be thinking, well look, this is just all too complicated. I list and sell houses, this is what I do. And you can't blame them for, for that. That's, they do it extremely well. So I think um, is just be curious and, and go to as many sessions, training, um, read, uh, listen to podcasts, or wh whatever it takes to just be aware that these things exist uh, and that there are providers out there, such as, uh, who can uh, do it for you if it's, if it's not something that you have the, the, the uh, resources in-house, whether you're a franchise with those people already in-house, uh, they can do it for you. 
uh, break things and put it back together again. Um, you know, I mean, as long as it's a calculated risk, take a risk. Mm. You know, it really is that simple. Um, because as I said earlier, it is tomorrow's world today. This isn't some outlandish thing for the future. Uh, it's not flying cars we're talking about. Um, so, although they probably exist somewhere in the world in development. So, for me, as I said, yeah, I would totally endorse and echo what Josh said. But you, we just got to basically think: if we were starting a real estate business again tomorrow, how would we do it? And what you're doing today should be no different to that vision. Simple. I, I was just going to say, basically, just give it a go. I mean, yep. it's, it does sound daunting, it's really hard, um, but you know, one improved warm conversation that you have improves one listing conversion and that's, yeah. You know. I, I think a good place to start is always with questions. So thinking about what are the things that you'd really like to solve? Is there a hypothesis that you have around your type of customer or the ideal type of customer? Start with writing those down and then actually go and look at the data and see if that exists somewhere. It's a really good way. Otherwise you get kind of, you know, tunnel vision in terms of what already exists. Um, so I think it's a really good place to, you know, just brainstorm it, use the knowledge that you've already got. And, yeah. um, Can I just add a real estate example to that exact point? Yeah. There was a, a lady in Brisbane who, um, my hometown, uh, and she discovered through uh, data and, and researching that uh, a lot of the airlines were putting their head office uh, or their headquarters in Brisbane. So she started to realise that, well, there's going to be a lot of pilots and air hostess uh, hostesses and uh, people that looking for rental properties. So she decided to become the specialist property manager for um, airline staff and she is doing extremely well in and around the suburbs, around the airport. She wouldn't have known that without just being curious and, and being a specialist rather than a generalist. So I think just to that point is, is just being more of a specialist. So, is, so sometimes with that, your initial reaction when you hear this stuff is to go, oh, that'll never work. But in, and the minute you feel yourself going into that mode, stop yourself and say, all right, but what if it did? Yeah, from what I've heard is, you know, in, in almost in order is be, uh, be curious, um, get started, and then I would I would say stick with it, right? Because there's going yeah in the example that Mitch gave, one out of ten things may work. It's true, you know. You go down this new path of using using data and trying out new things, experimenting. You're going to fail quite a few times, and you know even the even the banks and and grocery stores, people who have a lot of data and are using it, are still learning, continuously learning, they haven't found one way to use, no use data. And, and do we see any new roles starting in real estate that haven't existed in the past? Do we, like, you know, BDMs are, are you know, fairly, fairly new, um, um, but do we now see major franchises having chief data officers? Uh, or Some of the big groups will probably start off, they'll start employing chief data officers and, and, a, and a team beneath them. Another thing that that having access to this data and having access to these consumers at your fingertips allows, and we've seen this from LinkedIn with some of the banks and some of the, the um, B2B, like the IT companies, is that it also opens up inside sales. So you could actually get a junior in the office pretending to be the, you know, the, 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 the principal or, or whoever, and actually doing half their sales job for them and then throwing leads over the fence when they're, when they're warmer. Cool, so I'm gonna summarize what I've heard today. We need to be curious, we need to um, start with our own data and get that kind of cleaned up and start really in, in investigating that. And, and that's kind of tied into start somewhere, so start with your own data. Um, measure and learn what you're, what you're testing and trialling. Don't write off everything from one or two hiccups. Um, and look at ways that you can then tie it into what else you're doing which is around you know look for good messages around it so con tied into your content tied into your training tied into your relationships and how you run relationships inside your business and and processes and and then look to what's going to come next does that sound like a pretty good summary cool